Hello. Uh, this dynamics video is going to help us to figure out the moment of inertia for a plate. We've already figured out a rod. Uh, to do the moment of inertia of a plate, we're going to start with something called the parallel axis theorem. And this theorem, some of you uh, used in strength of materials. And in strength of materials class, we used this version of the theorem. We said that uh, the moment of inertia at some point B was equal to the moment of inertia at some point A plus the distance between the two points times the area of the object. And that was the formula if you were using a area moment of inertia, which is what was important with bending beams. Uh, here in dynamics, we're going to be working with the uh, mass moment of inertia. So that's going to be m. And this value d represents the distance between points a and b. So for example, if I've got a rod here, and let's say this is point b, and this is point a then the distance d would be the distance between those two points. Okay, so this would say that the moment of inertia about point b is going to be bigger than the moment of inertia about point a. Uh, now, notice that as for the figure I have here, point b is not at the center of mass of the object. So uh, often we're interested in the moment of inertia, the mass moment of inertia, uh, with respect to the center of mass of the object. So let's say this is part, uh, or uh, let's try to find the moment of inertia of a plate. And we'll, we'll use this parallel axis theorem as part of doing that. So I'll draw a plate and let's identify its center. So we'll say it's right there. And I'm going to take this plate and divide it up into lots of thin rods. And for a thin rod, we already know the formula for the moment of inertia. So for this particular thin rod, its moment of inertia is 1 12th its mass times its length squared. That's something we already know. And where this distance here is the distance L. OK, now think to yourself uh, as you're watching this video, maybe even push pause. If this rod is infinitely thin, which term in the moment of inertia is infinitely small? Is it the m or the l? Answer, m. So the length or the height of this rod is not infinitely small. However, its horizontal width would be. So this width is small, which makes the, since that width is infinitely small, that would make the mass of this little sliver also infinitely small. So let's label that distance dx. Let's label the distance from the center to be x. So this would be some distance x. And we will then get our moment of inertia for this plate by adding together an infinite number of infinitely small moment of inertias. So that's what you're doing when you write the integral of di. You're saying the total moment of inertia of the whole plate is equal to the sum of lots of little individual moments of inertia. And the di, in this case, is the moment of inertia about points with respect to point C due to this really, really slim rod. So this is going to be 1 12th 
times dm, because remember the mass is infinitely small, times L squared plus, now using the parallel, uh, parallel axis theorem, So we'll get that 1 12th. I was trying to put a bracket on there. So 1 12th dm L squared plus d squared. And d squared would be what, which symbol? Make a guess. Yep, x. And m is what? Mass of what? Yep. It's the mass of that rod, which we call dm. OK. Uh, I'm going to let you finish this. But uh, let's, let me give you a couple other pieces that you might need. First, uh, what is dm? Well, dm is the mass of this little sliver. So it's the density times this amount. Now, when you're describing density, there's three ways to describe it. You could think of density as uh, mass per length. You could also think of density as mass per area. And you can also think of density like in the high school sense as mass per volume. Okay. In this case, I would like to represent the mass of this little sliver in, since I'm looking at a area of a plate, I'd like to look at it as the, uh, in terms of its aerial density. So we'll say that the mass is equal to the area density times its area. Now, again, make a guess as you're watching this video. Which of these two is infinitely small? The density or the area? One of them has to be, because we're going to set it equal to dm, which is infinitely small. So if neither sigma nor area was infinitely small, we'd have a, uh, this term on the right-hand side would not be infinitely small. So which is infinitely small? Is it the density or is it the area? Answer, the area is infinitely small. And this sigma is the mass density per area. So this would be equal to the total mass of the plate divided by the total area of the plate, which would be the length times the width. And just labeling the width on the picture, That would be the width right there. So I'd like you to see if you can uh, take this expression for sigma and replace the dm with sigma times da and figure out what da would be for this infinitely thin little rod. Put that in for Substitute that stuff in here. Integrate, put on your appropriate limits, and then find the moment of inertia for a rectangular plate.